I have to think that the relationship between humans and computers is the most interesting relationship in our time. It has changed and will continue to change everything. We're showing a few stories that look at how our language about our computers has changed, how our interface with computers has changed, and, and just how the machines themselves have changed over time. This transformation between computers really being a, just a utilitarian tool, something that was not that powerful to these things that are every aspect of our lives. So the Office for Creative Research we founded in the beginning of this year, and we really just have this this idea that 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 a practice that combines techniques from the arts and techniques from academia and techniques from the kind of technical world. When those three things come together, they can be used to, to tackle really interesting and novel problems. I'm Ben Rubin. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, the Office for Creative Research. I love old technology, with studios filled with oscilloscopes and ancient speakers, the artifacts of media archaeology. I'd love it if people saw some of these visualizations that we're doing, and it just gave them a, a different way of thinking about these objects. Our first computer was this big beige beast and had this big orange switch that would go <laughs> and then the computer would go through this, uh, I don't know how long it was, probably like a minute and a half startup sequence that sounded a little bit like your lawnmower and it would be like <laughs> and it, like, it, would, it was this really visceral thing. The first one is an investigation of how the machines themselves have changed. This is the first uh, computer that we use. This is this giant IBM machine. And then, and then these kind of uh, uh, weird desktop ones that only printed out to a printer. And then we get these cute little um, first, first kind of desktop uh, machines. And then we move all the way up to the Ultrabook and we see how the size and the performance has changed. We're letting people play a little bit of a game where they can take one Ultrabook and they can start building up another Ultrabook, you know, so it's like, how many of these historical computers would you have to put together to match one of these machines? You go from something that's like roughly the size of this table to something that's, you know, we know how big the Ultrabook is. We've changed the way we communicate, we've changed the way we, we, we think and compute. I'm not trying to sit people down and tell them something. You know, I, I'd like to put them in front of something and have them ask questions and to get a little bit more of that kind of awe around just how amazing these new machines are. I was the data artist in residence at the New York Times for two and a half years. I would love to say that the work that I do and the work that we do could change the dialogue around, around data and culture. You know, I, I think about the projects that I do, they always fall into two categories. There's the projects that I do in a day and there's the ones that I do in like a year just landed was definitely in a day. And I had just started using Twitter and I'd noticed that everybody on Twitter was doing these show off tweets where they'd be like, I just landed in Las Vegas or I just arrived in Hawaii. What could people do with this, with this data that we just were just kind of casting off without thinking about it? You know, artists have the ability to, to, to look at this whole data question from, from a different angle than the other players in, in, in the conversation do. We asked about 600 people to, to, to describe some wor words that they would associate with their first computer, their current computer, and their next computer. We think about data, a data set as a kind of terrain that you can navigate through. So I thought, if all these words were to make up terrain, then what would that terrain look like? And I'm asking the, the words which we think are positive to drift over to the right-hand side and the words that we think are negative to drift over to the left-hand side. Builds this kind of archipelago of of, of sentiment around, around how people think about computers and then kind of physicalizing this thing that, that people are thinking about about their machines. The idea of this, of this particular scene was to look at how uh, our, our hand-based input with our machines has changed. So the whole scene is made up of cursors. They eventually are forming the actual form of the hands and, and kind of animating through those gestures. With personal computers, it was just like keyboard. Really, the mouse remained our shining glory of interaction. Right now, we're still using the same interface, but we're using it with touch, with the understanding, hey, I can touch three things at once, or I can go from here to there instantly, and how that's changing the way that we're working.
I think what we're going to see is now we've, we've found some much more interesting new interactions. And what we're going to see is we're going to see a change in interface. I think that our projects tend to always be really different, and that's intentional. We like to explore different territory. And we were asked to start thinking about some ideas about, about how we could you know, take that, you know, for lack of a better term, that kind of data relationship that we have with our, with our personal computers and, 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 and show how that, that has changed.